Appium Desktop for Windows 10 Operating System Appium Desktop for Windows 10 Operating System is a really really a fascinating tool and it is much improved than its procedures. So Appium Desktop is an open source application which gives you the power of Appium Automation Server in a beautiful and flexible UI. It is a combination of few Appium related tools such as a graphical user interface of the Appium Server so you can set the options start or stop the server, see the logs, and you can also don't need to use the node or npm to install the Appium as it is a node runtime comes bundled with the Appium desktop. So you don't really have to go with the prerequisite that I was talking about before. Similarly, the inspector that is available within the Appium desktop is much refined and much beautiful and you can perform even an action on that particular UI like never before. So this is useful as a way to learn the Appium and how it works basically behind the scene. You can also set the desired capabilities and additional Appium server features to do all those stuff. So this is really, really cool. So let's quickly see this in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Chrome browser for downloading the Appium for desktop in Windows 10. All right, so now I'm in my Chrome browser and I'm gonna search for uh, the Appium uh, desktop. So you can go in here in this particular URL and you can see it is actually available in the GitHub and this is the Appium desktop. You can see the desktop is much cleaner and you can see the server logs and this is the inspector and you can even perform the operation there. For downloading you can just go to the release uh, link over here and you can download the latest version of the release. Uh, you can download for the Mac operating system as well and uh, the exe is for the desktop so you can download the 90 mb of it and once it is downloaded uh, i have already downloaded that to save some time and you can see the release is just eight days before much actively developed so that's the most important thing to remember all right i guess the appium server is just opening up it will take a little time here we go so this is the uh, appium desktop and you can see there is a, a update available again. So maybe I'm going to hit this ask me later. Uh, right. There we go. Uh, so within this, I'm going to start the server. So this is the host. You can see there is a uh, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0, which is the current host. And this is the port number. So this is like default. And you can set the advanced uh, options if you want. And if you know that, you can do that as well. Or you can go to the preset to perform the operation. So uh, whichever you are preferable, you can do that. All right. So this is the advanced options. You can see for iOS, you can set the web driver agent port, uh, the execute as sync callback host and uh, callback port. For Android, you can set the boost bootstrap, set Android port, Chrome driver port, and Chrome driver binary path. So whichever you're looking for, you can do that. Similarly, for the preset, you can do that as well. So uh, I'm just gonna leave everything very simple for now. So I'm gonna hit the start server. So you can see there is a black screen coming in and this is the Appium REST HTTP interface listener. So as I said before, Appium server is basically a Node.js server. We're just gonna perform post, get, and uh, set operation, right? That's pretty much exactly it is. And if you hit the start new session, you can see this time it's gonna bring a new window. If you remember in our previous videos of Excel Automation channel, uh, which is pretty old, I guess it's kind of obsolete right now, which has no such options available. And right now this has, this Appium desktop is much refined and much easier to understand as well. And see so there is a desired capabilities and you can attach to an existing session if you want. And I have already saved some capabilities for demo purpose, which I will talk later. But let's quickly see what the desired capabilities are. So as I said before, the desired capabilities are the JSON file. And you can see there is a JSON representation on the right hand side. So let's say if I'm going to put the platform uh, name uh, as Android, you can see automatically it's creating a JSON format for us on the right hand side. Similarly, I can keep on adding the desired capabilities. Uh, for instance, if I want to set device name, which is going to be uh, my emulator in this case, which is Android uh, 25, which I know in our previous video, I showed you that I have something called as Android 25 I just opened. So that's the one, that's the device name. And similarly, if I want to give the application path, I can give that as well. 
So the application path is going to be the path of the application. It can be a native application, it can be a hybrid application or whatever application that you want. So basically, this time I'm actually going to work with, uh, let's consider that I'm going to work with a native application developed by Xamarin, right? So I'm going to open that. So for opening that, just uh, use Windows E to navigate to uh, my document and I'm going to use the Xamarin.ui test application. And once again, this application is available in our GitHub of Exit Automation channel. If you want, you can just download that. If you go to the github.com slash exit automation repositories, you can see there is something called a Xamarin.ui test. So this is an application which we're going to test today for this particular uh, course as well. This is very easy to use and you can actually see that uh, I have the iOS application and Android application and universal Windows program application. So right now I'm going to work with the Android. So I'm going to go to the bin and I'm going to use the uh, this APK maybe just to give a shot and see what's going to happen there. I'm going to remove the uh, double quotes, just copy it along with it. So you can see this is the JSON representation automatically coming in for us. So I'm going to start the server session, but before that we need to run our emulator. So I have already written a simple bat file, uh, which you can see here within our Android SDK or here. I've written a start emulator.bat. So if I edit this, you can see it is C colon slash Android SDK tool emulator and at Android 25, meaning this is going to open this particular uh, emulator AVD for me. So that's it. So this is the very, very simple way of opening the uh, Android SDK instead of opening from the GUI that we did in our previous video. So let me close this and go to the command prompt. Here I can just type CD Android and start emulator.bat. So this is gonna basically open the same emulator that we saw in our previous video, which we open using that hard GUI. Uh, and rather this is much easier and you can see in the command line I'm opening it just a couple of uh, commands there on the command prompt all right so the uh, emulator has just booted up and i'm going to hit the start session and it's opened the black window there you can see the server is actually running and you can see there's an animation going on it's just really cool and right now what happens is basically it is going to install the native application for me within this particular emulator because that application doesn't exist basically and it is currently installing things for me i guess we'll get some error basically the error is something uh, which i'm looking for so what the error is saying that uh, it is going to open the application but once the application will be spawned it will wait for an activity which is the main activity and we probably don't get that main activity uh, and it is going to throw us an error so let's see all right so it seems like the application just opened and right now just wait for the activity you can see that it's waiting for some main activity and it couldn't really find it so it says the found package but it couldn't be able to find that activity this main activity and let's keep on retrying for many number of times and now it's probably going to boom there we go and it says that there is an error so unknown server side error and there is an error there so basically the application actually has a splash screen and it is actually looking for a main activity and once that error happens the error is actually saying that it couldn't be able to get that particular uh, main activity this guy so this activity it couldn't be able to find so it's looking for that so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to copy this guy and we have to actually create a activity like wait for activity so if you go to the saved capabilities here uh, I actually have something called as a native app so uh, if you see there is something called as app wait activity so if I go over here you can see there is something called as app wait activity and this is the activity we just have to wait for so if I put this app wait activity uh, desired capability uh, and oops the application has changed the path there so maybe i'll just copy uh the path and if i do this time i'm going to paste the signed version instead of the unsigned version so you can see that this time we have an additional uh desired capability 
but then waiting for the main activity uh, I'm just gonna save this guy and now if I try to run this what happened is it will wait for this main activity to appear and then once that main activity uh, appears there uh, it is gonna start that application and it's gonna wait until the application is fully loaded so let's see what's really gonna happen so the animation is still going on the booting is really going on good on and you can see that the application has just opened and you can see this time it's waiting for the activity there we go and we don't really have an error this time and you can see that the appium inspector is coming in and very very neat you can see if I hover there it is actually highlighting and if I select that it actually shows a very nice tree of what it is and you can also see the attributes and what is the text what is the class what is the package what is the content description is it checkable or clickable enabled focus scroll wow this is really cool this is much better than before in the appium uh, world and you can see that i can even do a send key here like tap or send key so let's say if i'm going to do a tap you can see that the clicking is actually happening it's not only happening there it's actually happening in the real device as well there we go the tap just happened there and it's taking some time to render here in the UI but that's really cool I could see that it's really happening so if I hit a back you can see that the back is really happening and it refreshes the UI there that's cool and now if I let's say if I want to select this guy and select this and if I hit a tap you can see that there's a tab with add on the real device on the right hand side right and now I also have to tap this add so let me tap again there we go it tapped which is cool and now let's say if I want to type some value in this title so if you remember you know xamarin.ui test course of exit automation channel in the Udemy as well we actually did this particular application automated which is much faster in xamarin.ui test using the tree command but here it is even more simpler with the GUI command of Appium this is very very neat and much easier so uh, let's say if I want to send some keys I'm gonna hit this send keys and uh, let's say EA and hit send keys you can see that it's performing a send key there and also in the real device there we go there in the real device and the rendering is actually happened there cool much easier and you can see the keyboard is also not coming in which is another option but if I select the content description I mean description here the keyboard just appears so you can see that the Appium for desktop in Windows is much intuitive way to work with a particular control because you already have a class package name uh, its index and where's the text and how you can identify that particular element uh, you can see you have everything which you're looking for to write your code so basically we can use the same values from here and start writing the code much simpler so we'll talk working with writing a simple code from our next video onwards. Thank you.